Welcome back everyone. This is a highly requested video. We're gonna be checking out Zapier's new feature called AI Actions, which allows us to do automations within our GPTs. This is super cool stuff here and there's a lot to learn. Now, one thing I wanna point out before we begin here as we're getting a lot of new viewership is I'm Corbin. I'm a full stack AI engineer. And for the past eight months, I have over a thousand videos where I'm showing you how to start leveraging AI in pragmatic ways. And I also give you news updates, but this shows you actual practical skills comparative to a lot of the content I see right now on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe if you actually want to learn how to leverage AI in the coming years. But without further ado, we're going to jump into this video today, which is going to show us how to use GPT and AI actions. If you're interested in using GPTs in other contexts, we went ahead and created this playlist here. We show you how to do API calls. We show you how to make it so it's trained on business data. We show you how to make private and public GPTs. We walk through some GPTs ourselves. So there's a ton of stuff we're learning today. This is all fresh. I mean, this came out Monday. But we're doing it together. So let's go and begin. So what we need to understand about, I'm going to go ahead and miss this because we do know that it is available. What we need to understand about AI actions when it comes to GBTs is we're going to essentially build out a GBT that is specialized for our specific automations with some nuance. So what we need to understand here is let's go ahead and just get started. So we're going to go ahead and copy this link. This link is basically going to allow us to authenticate our entire process so they know what Zapier automations we're referring to. Um, they know that we have a Zapier account, but for here, we're going to go ahead and come back over to ChatGPT. And in ChatGPT, if we come over to GPTs, as you see, we've been doing a ton of tutorials. We're going to go ahead and create a GPT, and we're going to do that together here. So we're going to go create GPT. We're going to go to configure, and I'm going to jump over here so I'm not in the way. And yes, if you just watched my other video here that we did an API no auth, it is the same day I'm recording in the same day. These are two videos in one day. Um, so for me, though, we're going to go ahead and add an action. So we're not going to add an action. We are going to go ahead and do a, actually, we are going to add an action. My bad. We're going to go to import URL here. I know it was a little hidden, right? It's a little hidden, but we're going to import URL. We're going to command V that. We're going to import. Okay. So this is going to give us a bunch of text. Who cares? All we need to know now is that we have actions to listing the available actions we have in our account, and we have the ability to run specific actions in our available account. So this is going to come into play later on. From here though, we need we don't need to put anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back up. Actually, I don't even need to save yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back here. It'll automatically save right there. And let's jump over to create. So we're gonna to have to proctor this a little bit. So if I come back over to this documentation here, as you'll see here, it's very confusing. So I'm gonna let you read it for a second. No, I'm just joking. Okay, so we're gonna actually get to do it really fast here. All we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and just copy some of this. I'm gonna show you exactly what we should copy. So go in and just copy like this. Go command C here. Come back over here, we're gonna command V, but we need to restructure this a little bit. Zapier didn't get it perfect. So we're gonna to have to restructure this so it works how we want it to work. So we're gonna keep the rules here. We're gonna go ahead, let me make sure I'm not in the way. I am in the way, of course I'm in the way. All right, so we're gonna keep the rules here. We're gonna keep the instructions, but the thing we're gonna change here is going to be our requ required actions. Um, this is gonna require us to make some actions. So before we even hit enter here and configure, this for the use case of GPT and AI actions. We actually got to go to a link here. Uh, not this one, this one. So I'm gonna put this in the description down below because this wasn't really clear in the documentation that they provided. Basically, um, I'm not sure if you can see, I probably cropped it out, but it's essentially actions.zapier.com GBT. Actually, actually, I'll just, let me just do this. This is the link. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I put it in the description down below. This is where we build out. And if you're familiar with the plugin tutorials, we did this in the past. This is where we actually build out the actions that are going to incur within the GBT. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm right, we'll fly over here. And one thing I also want to point out is, yeah, this is all the tutorials we've done so far on other past videos. So if you're really interested in learning how to leverage it, you can check those out. But we're going to go ahead and say add new action here. And with this new action, we're going to just do something very simple here. We're going to set up a automation automation for setting up, you know, an email to in this context to myself. But let's just say we have a pseudo boss and I have a sick day, but I want to make an automation where I send a sick email. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Gmail and we're going to do send email here. And obviously there's a ton to learn here. Basically, all you need to know about actions is that it's it can integrate with anything that Zapier can integrate with it with. So that's over 6,000 apps now. From here, though, you're going to have your already authenticated accounts. You might ask yourself, how did this happen? You come over to manage accounts and this is going to show you everything that's in your Zapier front end. Just to be crystal clear here, that is just going to zapier.com and these are gonna be your apps. These are basically the whole authentication process. If you're completely new to OpenAI and automations, uh, go ahead and check out one of my videos here. It's like a 40 minute long video. I show you how to integrate the API keys and everything like that. I think it's called like Zapier and OpenAI for 2023. I'll make sure to try to link it here as well. But if you're completely new, I, I suggest you check that out. 
uh, cause that's going to give you real good insight on this stuff. But from here, we're going to go back to our AI actions here and we're going to set some stuff up here. So in theory, I could have AI guess, and then we would basically tell AI what the email is. But for now, I'm going to set it to a fixed uh, email. For me though, I'm just going to go ahead and send it from our corporate account to our uh, courses account. So I'm going to go ahead and put in that email here. So this is a fixed email. In theory, I could have it uh, set to AI and then we can kind of proctor from there. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to have it fixed. Now we're going to have AI guess the subject because we're going to go ahead and you know make it ourselves here. Uh, scrolling all the way down here, you could add a bunch of stuff here such as you know signature, body type, label. Most of the stuff don't care about. What we can do here is we're going to set the action name. This is very important. This is how we're going to refer to it in GBT. So I'm going to say uh, sick email uh, send. So we're just going to call it that. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and require a preview before sending it. In theory, I could send it automatically, but I'm going to include that so you can kind of see the process here. And then all I need to do is hit enable action. So here's an important thing we need to understand from here on out. We need to come back over here and we need to click our enabled action. Well, first thing I want to point out is anything that's not enabled is not going to show up as a live feed, um, as you'll see in the front end pretty soon here. But everything that is enabled, what I want you to do is you want to come up to this URL here, which will probably be cropped out, but it's going to be a, there's going to be like a bunch of characters there. Uh, there's going to be a unique string of characters. So they kind of look like, uh, they kind of look like this, right? So this thing right here, this will be in the URL when you're inside the action, this will be there, right? D copy that. So what that is in this context is their quote unquote action ID. This is how the code speaks to itself in order to know specifically what action you're referring to. It has the layman version, which is the uh, sick email send. And then it has the like, you know, this is JSON talking version, which is going to be that crazy code over there or uh, unique identifier from here though, we can go and set this up. So what we want to do here is I'm going to just delete that real quick. And just so you guys remember real quick, if I come back over here to get started, basically we're just copying this and you might be like, why am I copying this? Don't, don't worry. We'll see. Um, we're going to go ahead and come over to zip your actions here. Um, let's come back, show all options here. And we're going to go ahead and grab the action name. So the action name in this context is sick email send. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and come over here to say action. This is where I put sick email send. And then we're going to go ahead and add one little uh, bracket here. Let me find the exact way that it's identified in the code. So the way it's identified in the URL itself is going to be action ID. So what we do here is we're going to do a semicolon here and then we're going to paste that action ID. So I'm going to jump back over here. Let me grab that and go like this. And one, actually one last thing is very important here. So I'm going to hit shift enter enter here and I'm going to say, uh, this, uh, GBT's use case is to be our Zapier AI task, uh, helper. That's important. If you don't add that, this can get confused here. It won't be able to load correctly, but adding just that one line understands that everything requisite of that is for this specific use case here. Therefore, when you have future things to train, future actions to train, future things you want to do with automations when it comes to GBT, add it like this, required actions, action name, action available ID from the URL, and then you'll be good to go and you can just go ahead and update the behavior here. So I'm going to go ahead and see, great, perfect, perfect. Um, how would you like, uh, okay, uh, give me a profile image. This is probably not going to, actually, I don't know. Let's see what this looks like. I'm curious. Obviously, there's limits to copyright and stuff like that, but I'm curious on what GPT can come up with. Dolly 3 Engine is a lot stronger than Dolly 2. If you've used Dolly 2 then you and you haven't used Dolly 3, I encourage you to check out Dolly 3. It's, you can actually put text in images now, which was definitely not available in the past. Okay, that's fine. I'm probably going to put the actual Zapier logo for the thumbnail, so you probably saw that already. But we got a nice little Zapier AI task helper here. Um, just for your reference, we have, um, there's additional stuff we need to do here. One thing that is very and very important here is make sure that web browsing is enabled. This is going to allow it for it to communicate. Dally 3 is not too important. We'll leave it uh, enabled anyways. Um, everything else should be good to go here. There will be a point here where there's going to ask for authentication. One other thing I want you to know though, if I come over here to uh, this little schema, if you see here, where did I get that available action ID? That occurs here. So this is one of the available actions that, you know, run action. Um, and obviously it's a post this available action ID is how it references the automation it's doing within GPT's front end from here though. Let's go ahead and paste here at certain points here. There may be, let me do only me here. I'm, just cause I don't need to do a privacy policy. There's certain points. It may ask for your consent in the context of making sure that GPT can access it. So you have to say uh, yes to that so that Zapier AI task can work. Okay, so we're gonna say what task can we do? Hit enter here. 
right, so we're going to make sure we say it allow here. This, this is probably just not going to work. I think I still have to give it a green light. It may work. It may not work. Let's go ahead and see. Okay, actually it worked. So we're fine. You may get proctored to give it a green light. It might take it to another different page. Just say, yay, okay. From here though, we're going to go. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to say, um, just so you can get real clear on how this works um, when you add more. We're just going to say, let's do the action. Let's do the action of sick email send. Okay, perfect. So this is going to be able to call upon what we built in that uh, UI from Zapier. Uh, when it comes to AI actions here, I'm going to say, can you come up with all the relevant subject uh, description or body for this email? My boss is name is Bob. Let's see what it does. So obviously this is a pretty, you know, niche use case. It's gonna get really more complex. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see more complex tutorials when it comes to this. But basically I wanted to do this tutorial in order to show you like how it all interlinks. Cause I know it was a little bit confusing um, with the documentation. So now you have it in video format, you can kind of see what's going on. So if you feel like you've learned something so far, make sure to leave a like, helps me out here. Um, as you see here, we got our subject, we got our body. If you don't like uh, the fact that it did CSS, I can kind of be like, for the body, can you just output in plain text uh because sometimes when it's doing outputs it will structure it into like code but like it's not really code okay so it doesn't really necessarily want to do that for me i'm gonna say uh don't use a css block okay let's see if it listens here there you go so we got our plain text uh dear bob i hope this message finds you well i'm writing to inform you that i have woken up feeling quite unwell this morning after assessing my conditions. So from here, I can keep going at it. I could add, uh, I don't know what you'd add humor here, but you could add humor here, add X, Y, Z, whatever it may be. You can keep playing with it. Once you're satisfied though, all we need to do is this. Uh, let's send email. And this is going to incur the AI action that we uh, fleshed out here. Note that it's enabled. We have a little green check. And then as you see here, we're gonna go ahead and bring it out here. And then you'll know it's working when you see that right there. We're gonna go ahead and say allow. And this is gonna go ahead and push it to the AI action that we built earlier. And then I should get a link here asking me to confirm it. There we go. Um, and we can go ahead and hit, hit this link here. Just let it print out real quick. As you see, this is the ID that we were referring to earlier here. And then once I click this link here, review confirm, and I hit run, although this doesn't look like this has a subject. I'm gonna run it. Is might not have a subject. Okay. Body's missing. Run into an error. It's all beta. It's all alpha. So in order to fix that, we're going to say, mate, uh, redo this, but make sure to include the body. A lot of my tutorials, I'll keep this kind of stuff in the tutorial because there's a high likelihood, like me and like you, you'll run into errors. So I want to show you how to circumnavigate those errors live. Um, kind of... <laughs> Very useful, right? So let's go ahead and see if we can, you know, batter this back up. So we went ahead and got another link here. There we go. We got our subjects, we got our body, and remember we put the fixed text for the underlying email here. I'm gonna hit run, and this should send me an email here. I should get a green check mark, um, not a blue check. I don't got that on Instagram, but let's go ahead and check our emails real quick. Okay, there we go. So as you see above me, we have the underlying email here, the subject line. Obviously, I probably could have asked it to format it in HTML to make this look a little bit better, so it's not just a complete blurb. But the use case of today's video wasn't necessarily to show you a super complex formula. The use case was just so you can understand how it all interconnects, where now I have a GBT that is specialized with our specific automations for what we're trying to achieve today. If you enjoyed today's video, I know this is a little bit of a selfish promo here, but these have been getting a lot of traffic and you want to hear me talk more layman about different topics. You can check out our TikTok here. I just talk to you like it is and basically as a full stack AI engineer, my perspective on the industry and stuff you should probably get insight on. If you want to hear my random thoughts a day, you can check out Twitter here. Um, just a bunch of random stuff that I think is pretty cool here. From here, though, we basically uh, went over everything we need to understand when it comes to OpenAI's API and these new GBTs and AI tasks with Zapier. Obviously, there is a ton of stuff we can do, and there's a ton of stuff we will do on this channel. So make sure to stay tuned here. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, make sure to give a like. It lets me know you like this kind of content and you want to see more of this. Also, if you're interested in GBTs as a general topic here and you just found yourself here, you can check out the playlist at the end here where we're essentially jumping into everything we should know about GBTs. I'm showing you from making it a private, a public, API calls, uh, you know, personal, business, whatever it may be. We're going to learn everything we need to know about these GBTs. Uh, this is pretty new here. 
it's like basically you're watching a YouTube video from 08 and I'm just like, yo, there's a new thing called an iOS store, an app store on an iPhone. I don't know if you heard of it. Same deal, GBT. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.